Hey guys, Dean Gerhard here coming at you with another video. Uh, this is my uh, pickups from the 2021 Sports Collectors National. Um, started out, we left Pittsburgh on Thursday morning and was all set to get there by about 4.30 and we got a flat tire in Indiana. Uh, and it was bad enough that we needed to get it replaced, so that delayed us by about four hours. So we ended up getting there about 8.30, quarter to 9. Got something checked into the room, got something to eat, and pretty much called it a night. Uh, so went to the show on Thursday. It was my first day there. Walked around for a good hour before I made any purchases at all. I ran into... Dave Blue Jacket 66 and his son Caden talked to him for a little bit and then uh, just continued looking around at different things. Um, had a couple of things in mind I wanted to do this year. Um, I was looking for a big purchase, which I will get to in a little bit, um, but I really was kind of focused on uh, working on some sets, trying to. Uh, not complete them, but um, fill in the gaps. Um, I knew some dealers I dealt with before that had good prices on cards um, in nice condition because I was I'm looking for nice condition stuff. So um, found one guy. Um, ended up picking up these 66 tops cards. Pretty much all commons, but there are high numbers in here. A few. Um, I think I averaged uh, about five bucks a piece on these. So, uh, if you want nice, nice cards, nice condition cards, you got to pay up for them. Uh, my thinking was to get these on eBay, uh, you know, auction style. I'd probably end up paying a lot more than that. I'm sure I could have found some of these at a buy it now, but by the time you factor in shipping costs and uh, tax and stuff like that I would end up spending about that much anyway so I was real happy to get these um, so that's that the next thing I bought um, I jumped into the T206 Hall of Famers um, I've got about 40, maybe, maybe 50 T206s, but none of them are Hall of Famers. And I actually sought out the dealer that first got me started uh, in collecting T206s. And his advice to me was to start picking up some Hall of Famers. Now you could say to yourself, well, of course he's a dealer, he's trying to make money, but the more I thought about it, the more it made sense, uh, because, uh, everything's up right now. Uh, the one good thing about T206 cards, they always seem to hold their value. So I figured I better jump on it. So I picked up this Mordecai Brown with Cubs on the shirt and Rube Mark Wade with hands at thighs. Um... This Mark Quaid, I don't know how it got a two and a half. It's got that little little mark on the corner there, but I mean, as far as overall looks of the card, I was happy with it. It falls right in place with uh, the other cards I have already. Um, on this Rube card, there's some a little bit of wrinkling on the top. But other than that, it had nice color. The backs seem to be pretty clean, so. For the most part, I was happy with these uh, for just, you know, for the first time buying some Hall of Famer ones. So maybe someday I'll upgrade them. I don't know. But for now, uh, I was happy to get those. So um, he knocked, uh, I think, 10 bucks off each price. So and it kind of fell in line with what they're selling for. So I was happy with that. Uh, next up, I picked up some 75, 76. Uh, basketball cards um, and every dealer was willing to deal um, 
before I could even ask or suggest a different price, they were automatically, you know, just, you know, if it came to 50, they'd, you know, give me 40 or, or whatever the case, case was. There's only one dealer that didn't deal, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, and then I picked up some 1966 Hall of Famers. I got Whitey Ford. Paid. And you see it's got 50 on it. You got Willie Stargell. Got 40. Bob Gibson, 50. And these two 61s, Ernie Banks, MVP, 50. And high number, Hoyt Wilhelm, 50. So all together, this came to 240. Sold them to me for 200. So I was real happy with that. I thought that was a fair price. It's a guy I've dealt with many times in the past uh, with Hall of Famers working on my sets. So I thought that was a fair price on those. Um, what else did I, the first day, oh, the first day also. I was walking around with Don, filled of dreams. First time meeting him. He's also from the Pittsburgh area. Uh, hung out with him pretty much the rest of the day, that first day. But while we were walking around, these 1960 Fleer cards, they had them all laid out. Uh, I think it was about, I don't know, 48 of them here. And there's one double. Um, and it had three bucks a card on it. So, I mean, they're not perfect, but they're good enough for, you know, building the set, you know. So I asked a guy if I bought them all, what would he sell them to me for? And he said, how about a dollar fifty a piece? And I said, sure. And should have came to like 70 bucks or something. I, th I think he ended up just telling me, telling me to give him 65. So I thought that was really cool. Good deal. Uh, I must have the set here. I'm only missing a handful now. So that was, that was good. I think this is actually the best deal of the whole show because buying these individually, um, especially online, you'll easily pay, pay two bucks a piece for these, unless you get them in a group, you know, but anyways, I thought it was a good price. So that was pretty much the first day's pickup. So, uh, Saturday or Friday night went to another, uh, YouTube get together. Uh, Oh, before the YouTube get together, uh, I met Rick Oddball Cards and Mike Canadian Cards, uh, and they persuaded me to, along with Don, to go to the uh, the meet and greet that night. So, ended up my wife and I went over to that meet and greet, uh, and I met uh, Picker Jim, and I met uh, James Elite Hunter. And I met Rue Dog, and I can't remember his first name. I apologize, but uh, all great guys. Sat with them, chatted with them for a while. Um, had a good time there. Uh, while we were there, a card show started up again. All these young kids were pushing tables around, and they were wheeling and dealing. Uh, I didn't buy anything, but I just thought it was it was pretty funny. Uh, some of the other guys got footage of it. Uh, it was amazing, like a, a card show just popped up out of nowhere in the lobby and right beside the bar and stuff. So uh, I was actually surprised the hotel was okay with that because most of the most of those guys were, were young. I mean, I don't even know if they probably weren't even 20 years old. Some of them were 15, 14, 15 years old. They were wheeling and dealing. And uh, from what I understand, they were wheeling and dealing into the wee hours of the morning so but anyways uh next uh i picked up uh some more 61s uh i think i end up or 61s 66 uh cards here there's uh some high numbers in here and some semi stars so uh basically this dealer you know, he added up everything up, and I think they took like 25% off or something like that. So it was a good price. I'm going to deal with them again when they come to a show in Pittsburgh. So, uh, but yeah, I, I got this set down to un needing less than 100 now. So I was real happy with that. Um, picked up some 58 
1958 singles. These are just all commons. I just picked any one that had a $3 tag on it. And then uh, I think he uh, sold me all these for 70 bucks. I think it was. So and they're all X. At least X. So I was happy with that. And that was kind of my thing. I was kind of looking for dealers. Um, to, you know. I guess they call them the dollar box or whatever. I didn't actually look, look through boxes. These were all in pages. So it the same idea, same concept. That's what I was looking for to, uh, you know, chip away at my sets. Um, then I went to another guy I deal with a lot and picked up all these 69 Pops football cards for my set, which I also got that down to, to needing under a hundred now. Um, and with his deal, he had it right on the table. Um, if you buy, you know, a hundred dollars worth, it's twenty five percent off. So I got twenty five percent off all these, which I thought was a really good deal. Um, buying these individually on eBay, you definitely pay sticker price like that for all of them so i think i got a really good good deal on all these so i'm not going to go through all of them but you get the idea so and from that same dealer i also picked up some 50 1957 59 and 61 tops football cards for my set and i give all these a near mint grade so um and that's how I'm building these sets in near mint. And like I said, I've bought from them in in the past. I'm trying to think of the name of the dealer. I can't. It's Bagger, Bagger something. But anyways, uh, they always have nice stuff. I got a lot of my uh, 1956 cards from them. So, but again, you get the idea. Here's some uh, 59s. And then I picked up some uh, 57s. Nice clean backs, nicely nicely centered. Four sharp corners, so that was uh, what I was looking for there. And then, what else did I pick up? Oh, I picked up some blankets. This is Ann Smith. Washington. These are the B B18 blankets from 1914. There's Chick Gandal. So I got the Ainsmith and Gandal together. Uh, they were marked at 85. I got them both for 70. So I was happy with that. And then this is the other blanket I picked up from another dealer. This is the only dealer of the day that did not offer me a discount. And I paid 40 bucks for this and probably should have walked away. He had a huge stack of them. Uh, if I would have picked out more, maybe he would have cut me a deal. I don't know. I like it, kind of like it when they tell you up front, you know, the more you buy, I'll cut you a break or whatever. Or if you've dealt with them before, you just kind of know. Or they have a sign that tells you that they're going to give you a deal. I'm not the, the biggest, uh, you know, dicker in the world. I think that's what the, a term they they use. Uh, but uh, I didn't argue. I just hooked, got it because I wanted it. It was at the, towards the end of the show. And I was just tired. So uh, I picked up these, just these little couple of football players that were in a, the five dollar box and I, I think I paid 12 bucks for all three so uh, that's that and then my big big purchase um, I went to the show with hopes of trying to find this card uh, the first day I was there I found one in a graded seven and it was around Twelve or thirteen hundred for that. The ones I had bookmarked on eBay, they were around fifteen hundred. And the same guy that had the seven also had a bunch of sixes, and I think he wanted nine for them. So 
that was Friday, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, and I'm looking all around, all around, and I was looking for a raw one, just couldn't find one, looking for graded ones, just nobody had them, I just, you know, I asked a couple guys, oh, I just sold it earlier this week, blah, 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 that kind of story, so I decided Friday night that, you know, I'm going to go to the show Saturday, probably not going to buy this card because I took $1,500 with me and I'd already spent almost half of that $1,500. So here comes Saturday, Saturday morning. I walk into the show. I just kind of do a little loop around and I wasn't even there five minutes and I ran into a guy <laughs> that had the 56 Ted Williams graded a six had not seen this the day before and I asked if I could look at it and you know looked on the back seen the price tag 900 I'm like okay and he told me he would be willing to sell it for eight 800 and I'm like mm, I had exactly like $800 in my pocket just walked into the show thinking I got all day and I'm not going to have any more money to spend. And he said, we do take credit. And I'm like, Ugh. so I figured I could ask for, for, it's better to ask for forgiveness later <laughs> for my significant others. So I figure what the heck. So I went ahead and pulled the plastic out for this. And I finished the 1956 top set, the 340 cards. I do not have the checklist yet, but I'm officially marking this off as being done. I'm going to pick up the, the checklist at some point, but I've already moved this into my completed set. So um, this is the only Hall of Famer I have graded. Um, I have about 33 graded commons but everything else is raw i'd like to upgrade the mickey mantle and the uh roberto clemente at some point but uh i will be doing a uh a set a look at you know a binder video on the 56 set and the tabletop of the uh of the car uh graded one so um so i was just absolutely thrilled to get this I had no regrets about pulling out the plastic to get it. Uh, my wife was happy for me. There was no negative reaction from her part. So the only bad thing is for about a day, it was a little bit of a nail biter because I forgot because I hadn't found any the night before. I went ahead and bid on one on, on eBay <laughs> and I bid like, uh, I don't know, 925 on it. And I was in the, I was winning and I woke up Monday morning and looked and thank goodness I'd lost, but I did give my wife the heads up that, you know, I might be owning two of these. Uh, but I assured her that I was pretty sure I could sell, sell one of them. Uh, and either make some money or at least get my money back. So I wasn't real concerned. I was just kind of happy I didn't have to pull out another, you know, 900 plus tax and shipping. So, but um, overall, I was real happy with the show. Uh, I had a great, great time uh, talking to, you know, people. Uh, I feel like I've known them for years by watching them, uh, you know. It's kind of it's kind of funny. You're like, hey, I know that's so and so, or that's so and so, when you're walking by. But it's funny in a show that big. I didn't run into hardly anybody until I was like kind of standing still, uh, because faces blend together. You know, you're looking at cards, you're looking at faces on cards and stuff all day. Uh, just everything kind of blends together. So when I stopped and took a break, that's when I started noticing uh, different different people. So, you know. But that's all I've got. I'll do a quick, quick scan here of everything. One more time. These were all my 
my pickups this year. So, thanks a lot everyone for watching and have a good night.